still rocking after all these years. This is the story of my rock and roll butler. This is it, the show that started it all. Often imitated, but never equal. From San Francisco, USA, online since 2004, is the one and only rock and roll geek show. With the original rock and roll geek, Michael Butler. Welcome to the Rock and Roll Geek Show. My name is Michael Butler. Thanks a lot for joining me. I really appreciate it. Today is Wednesday, August 19th, 2020, and it is 5, 10 p.m. when I'm recording this intro. This morning, before I went to work, at 6 a.m., I talked to the great Pete Way's wife, Jenny Way. We talked for, I could have talked to her for a lot longer, but... Uh, First of all, I did not want to take up too much of her time. And second of all, I had to go to work, so I, didn't ha I had a limited amount of time. But we spoke briefly on the phone this morning for about 20 minutes. And, uh, man, what an emotional phone call it was. I'm going to, I'm going to play that for you now. Uh, before I do, I'm going to apologize in advance because uh, I lost it during the interview. It was just so sad. We talk about how Pete Way died. We talk about the accident. We talk about plans for the new record that's been recorded for a while. And we talk about other things. It's very emotional. And I really thank Jenny so much for talking to me. She was so gracious and so nice and polite. And she did not have to talk to me. Her husband just died. But she did. She was very gracious and if she's listening to this, I want to thank her very much from the bottom of my heart for talking to me. I hope you enjoy this brief conversation I had with Jenny Way. I'm just going to let it play, friends. Thank you for listening. Rockandrollgeek.com. Send me an email, rockandrollgeek at gmail.com. And you know the rest of the ways to reach me, friends. Here's my conversation from this morning with Jenny Way. I wanted to offer my condolences, first of all. I, I mean, it was... Are you okay now? Are you how are you holding up through this? I'm not okay. Um, obviously, I'm running about trying to organise funerals, hmm. um, as you do, and as a result, I'm you know I've got something to occupy me. I think when that's over, and we've got all sorts of issues over here. By um, we can only have twenty people because of COVID and. <laughs> you know, and everybody's sending me, you know, I want to come to the funeral. And like, you, you can't because there's 20 people, you know, and it, it's, it's just ridiculous. <laughs> but, um, it's no time to do any of this sort of thing. But what we thought was we'd do, we're going to do a live stream. And um, not that I think anybody would want to watch a funeral, but um, and then do a memorial next year when hopefully we can do some live music again and... and you know, get the great and the good that were influenced by Pete and get them playing and um, and everybody can do that. I, I, it's the only thing I can think of, to be honest, because, uh, yeah. you know, it's uh, just impossible to, to do anything at the moment in England. I don't know about, well, like, yes, this is bad, isn't it? But, um, no, nightmare. When I heard that Pete died, I cried like a baby. I thought, I'm almost crying now just thinking about it. Yeah, me too. I saw you, I, I listened to your own little podcast thing, and actually all the band has got together and they're all raising a glass. I've got a photograph of them all raising a glass, um, and we're going to book that up on Pete Way Official to you. So hmm. there you go. Everybody was very touched by us, I think. Yeah, I would think that... You know, everybody in the pubs all over England, all because he was such an influence on everybody. Whether they, I don't know anybody who said anything bad about him, other than maybe uh, Phil Mogg. But even that was just in joking. But everybody loved Pete. I'm sure in the pubs, everybody would be raising a glass if you could sit in the pubs and drink. Yeah, well, that's another problem. <laughs> it's just terrible. I've been drinking. <laughs> um, no, he'd actually cleaned up his act considerably um, over the last two years. It's uh, I think he got bored of it all, you know. And uh, he was very um, 
you know, keen to get on the road. And I, I, that was what yeah. the thing that, that um, everything got cancelled. And the worst thing for Pete is to be bored. Yeah. And, and to see them all, all these... Yeah, we're supposed to be in Japan now, actually. Um, it, it didn't obviously contribute to his death, but it certainly put him in the wrong frame of mind to be fighting, you know, um, let me put it that way. So it's... Uh, yeah, because he, he, ju- he was just getting back to playing and everything and doing shows, and, and then all of this stuff yeah. happened. So can do you, do you mind telling me what exactly happened? How did he die? Right, he fell down the uh, stairs in our house. Huh. It was right at the top. I know it's pathetic, isn't it? It's like, you know, it's like Superman breaking his back. You know, it just it shouldn't have happened. And it was, uh, he, he was stood at the top um, asking me what I was cooking, believe it or not. And um, the next thing I saw was a sort of a blur past me. They are quite steep steps, but I mean, they're steps, you know, stairs. They're not, um, it's not a, you know, a, a metal, you know, um, a circular stair, you know, it's just a, it's just a sort of carpeted stair. So he crushed into the banister at the bottom. Um, he sort of, he wasn't breathing, so I had to get him out of the banister, I didn't actually suck him oh out of the God. Um, he was bleeding everywhere to the point where this isn't right, you know. And so I managed to get him breathing again. Um, and luckily the paramedics rushed in with a defibrillator at that exact point. So um, it was that close, you know, um, because I was, I was only keeping him going. You know, I wasn't actually bringing him back. I was just keeping the the air going there um and we went off screeching off to the hospital and um he had fractured his skull he had broken all his ribs which had gone into his lung and collapsed which had collapsed um his spleen was ruptured oh my god um it was just horrendous and both his legs horribly lacerated I did think one was broken because it was down to the bone, but actually it wasn't. It was just that, you know, he'd taken the whole whole thing off. Um, and, but, you know, we still, they, they went in, and the first day, the first night, they, they said to me, look, we don't think he's going to, we don't think he's going to make it. Um, and I said, well, wait, because this is Pete you're talking about, and, you know, he doesn't give up easily. Um... And he uh, he got through it. Um, he had a, but they couldn't stop the bleeding. He had a lot of bleeding, and he couldn't. Um, they couldn't stop that. So they were wrestling with trying to stop it. I think he had about ten transfusions in the end. Um, and in the end, they thought right. They just packed him full of absorbent padding um, and closed him up. Um, put him in a um, induced coma and put him on a ventilator. Uh, the bleeding did stop, thankfully, so the next couple of days they took him back into theatre and, and took the padding all out, then removed the spleen and did all the other bits and pieces they had to do, and of course he started bleeding again. So we had to go through all that again. Um, he was in a coma then... Um, an induced coma and on the ventilator for about three weeks, four weeks. And they woke him up and uh, the first couple of times he wasn't really breathing properly. But it's, it was all because it was obviously his lung had collapsed and he'd got chest strains in and they were getting infected and his lung was infected and the other one was infected. You know, it just, just went on and on. Um, and we still sort of, I can't tell you how many times they told me, prepare yourself for the worst because, I, you know, yeah. it, I, I was that many times I thought this isn't going to you know he's not going to come back from this but he did and in the end they took out uh, they, they got him off the ventilator put him um, in well they put him in a tracheotomy which means it's a hole in his throat right 
where they can actually, without him having to be sedated, because it's not good for the sedation to yeah. be um, that long in you, because right. especially like he, because he's he's of an age. Obviously, he hasn't looked after himself mm-hmm. for two hours. Um, you know, if you if you're a thirty year old fit man, then they can leave you there for perpetuity. But um, with Pete, and with off the event later, and and so they put him. Um, into uh, put this tracheotomy in, but tracheostomy, which is a, a, a um, tube down straight into his lungs, right. so they could pump oxygen straight in. But he was awake. Um, it was all a bit unpleasant, actually, because he his his vocal box was above the tracheostomy tube. So when he tried to talk. The air couldn't get to his vocal box, so he didn't understand why he was made, he was mm-hmm. talking. No sound was coming out, and it was and he wasn't really with us. You know, the the kind of the lights were on, but not probably he wasn't home. You know, it was a bit yeah. like. Um, but we all put it down to the sedation, and you know, and doctors said, "Don't worry, if that will that will go because you know it's a he's been with a long time on them." Um, a ventilator and it will sort itself out and it, it carried on and carried on and um, they took the ventilator the uh, tracheotomy out in the end and uh, he was they had a couple of dummy runs where he didn't breathe very well and then they eventually took it right out and left the hole to seal itself up they didn't want to go in again and you right. know risk more bleeding um, and he could talk so Again, he wasn't Pete. He didn't know. I don't know if you know anything about football, but he didn't know who Aston Villa were. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he, it's his team that right. he would die for. You know, um, he didn't know who I was. I think I was oh. Sally. I was Pam. I was. I was all sorts oh. of people. I didn't quite know. Um, he didn't know who he was. He didn't know he'd been a singer. Um, so whilst he was there, you know, obviously we were all praying that the, the mind would come back. Um, and it got better and better, then he had another bleed. So he had to go back into ICU um, and put him back on the ventilator. So we started the whole week, and that, they left him on that for about a week, and then we had to start the whole process over again oh. of taking it out and... Um, and, and in during this time, quite frankly, he was so frail and little. You know what a big man Pete yeah. was? He had big uh-huh. personality and he was a tall guy and, you know, a bit on the gangly side, but, you know, you knew he was in a room. Well, suddenly there was this little man in the bed. You know, it, it, if you get somebody who's very ill, they uh-huh. sort of disappear. And it was the worst thing I've ever, honestly, ever had to deal with I, I just couldn't bear it um, anyway he developed l- lung infections pneumonia both lungs more lung infections they sort out one lot and then they you know um, then he'd get another one and the antibiotics were going in constantly and he was still all over the place but but he actually was getting the brain back a bit you know we were having a sort of conversation um, and I, and I don't doubt that would have come back actually in in due course, um, but uh, this is about two months ago. And I, the reason I didn't put a press release out was because it kept on going the wrong way. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I didn't put something like, oh, you know, he not expected to survive, and then he did. <coughs> so then I went, you know, Pete Wave kicked, you know, um, the reaper in the balls, and then suddenly he goes the other way. You know, so it was really difficult to to put out anything that was accurate because it was changing every, every it's like a roller coaster every day something else was happening um but they they ended up actually doing a lot of physio with him they had to he couldn't stand up he couldn't do anything because when you've been in a sedated state like that um you, your muscles just go because you're not even flexing them in the bed you know right, you're, right. you're, you're just, they're, they're, they waste away um, so he was having a lot of physio. Um, 
And they said, well, you know, we think we're going to discharge him. So I was absolutely, you know, on top of the world. Uh-huh. It was like, right, that's it. We're going to we've got to get all the beds downstairs. They're going to be downstairs. He hasn't got to go up the dreaded stairs, you know. Right. Um, and we'll have him so we can wheel him out onto the patio and get him some sun and get him, you know, strong again. And yeah. Da, 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 da. Um, so the next day I went in to get him. And, well, I hadn't left to get him, sorry. And I had a phone call quite early in the day saying, you better get him now. And it was, why? Um, I knew what it was, obviously. Um, They said, no, get him now. I don't, just get here. Um, So I I drove like a complete lunatic to get across town. Um... And just as I sort of burst into the the room, he passed away. I'm so sorry you had to go through this. It was horrible. It was horrible. <laughs> you know, uh, he was so protective of me. He, uh, I think I said it in, in, in on my Facebook somewhere that he wouldn't let the wind blow on me. You know, he was so protective of me. And it was just, you do, you do that for somebody you love. It's not a chore, is it? It's, it's you know, he was ill, he needed me, and whatever came yeah. back, it, I'd accept that. That was fine. But what I never wanted for him was the inability to get back up on a stage again, because that would have killed him. If yeah. he was sitting like a little old man in a, in a, in a chair, um, you know, Regardless whether he was full, back to all his full faculties, it, it, it just, it wouldn't have been Pete. It, he, he would have preferred to have died, I think, to be honest. Um, because if you know him, and I know you do, yeah. he, he's not a, he's not a sit in the corner type of guy. No. You know, he, he lives to be. He, he was a rock and roller from, from till he died. Yeah. Rock, rock and yeah. roll was his blood, his blood. Yeah, and I say we should be in Japan now, and to be honest, um, you know, that getting completely blown out because of this hateful virus is, um, you know, that didn't help because he said, well, are we ever going to go out and we've got this album that's yeah. been done since the dawn of time, it seems, you know, um, and we're... Uh, you know, and that that's now finished, and that was coming out, and there was much celebration, and you know it was all going to happen, and it it went wrong, and it didn't, and we actually called our t- tour the expect the unexpected tour, yeah, and I think that was actually named actually. Uh, so are you are you unexpected. are you planning on releasing the album post posthumously now? Yeah. Yeah, I, I I want to I want to but for for Pete's sake, because you know he he waited so long for it to come out, and there was just one more thing needed doing, and just one more thing needed doing, and yeah, it went on and on. Then yeah. it was like, oh, well, we can't put it out now because it's near Christmas, and so oh, we'll do, we'll, we'll schedule it for February. Then there was something else needed doing, you know, and it just seemed to go on and on for years. I mean, I remember working for Jeff Wayne when he was. Re- Recording War of the World, uh-huh. and it took five years. Well, Pete has taken about eight, I think, <laughs> to get it all yeah. sorted out. P- and it was because it was going in bits and bits, because um, at one point Pete couldn't go to the States, it was down to poor old Mike Clank to come here. Mm-hmm. And obviously he's busy, you know, he's got his stuff to do, although he put, you know, he put tremendous effort in to, to sort it out. And Eventually, we did actually get Pete back. He could go back into the States again. This is why we were um, organizing a, a sort of serious stateside tour next year. Um, we were going to do Japan, Pacific Rim, you know, Australia this year, following on with Europe, and then into the States. And, you know, and, and it was all sort of, sorted out and as I say you know and then there was COVID so you know I I don't know I don't know and but as I say the one thing I do know is he wouldn't want to not be able to get on the stage again he just wouldn't want to he didn't live for anything else really if the truth be known maybe Aston Villa but (laughs) yeah he didn't really you know 
and there's so much else. And uh, uh, maybe us. And he loves animals. And, you know, he, we've got a sort of menagerie. And he absolutely adores the animals. And, you know, but really, he, he just wanted to be on tour. That's what he he did. And that was his job. And that was the end of it, really. He, you know, he, he wouldn't have thought of sitting about. It wasn't in his nature. Have you heard yeah. from any of his previous bandmates from UFO or Wasted or any of the old bandmates? Um, I, I've got his bandmates now for the Pete Way band, but yeah. I haven't um, heard directly. Michael put out a statement, I know, yeah. um, which was very heartfelt. Yeah. Uh, and I, I believe Phil and the band... Um, put out some saying, you know, well, terribly sorry to have heard, et cetera, et cetera. Mm. But to be honest, that all sorted itself out last year because they both played the um, Sweden Rock. Yeah, I remember. They were on the same bill. Yeah, and it was all going to be, oh, God, what's going to happen? And um, it was never actually Pete and Phil that fell out. I think it was an ex-wife of Pete's that got in mm. and I just ruined that relationship. So... We did a lot of sort of bridge mending, and they got together and they spent the night, you know, going back through the memories and had a really great night, both of them. And it was so nice to see them back yeah. together because I'd known them. I've known Pete since 1980. Um, I did, in fact, I worked for Pete in 1980 because I'm a publicist, uh -huh. so I did I did his his PR, and then when he left UFO. I put together, or helped put together, um, Fastway with him and Fast Eddie. Uh -huh. So, you know, I've known him for a long time, and uh, you know, he's. It, it was it was wrong that they should not be speaking. It was just wrong. Yeah. Um. So, I they, they were. I, I don't think Phil's sort of statement was particularly gushing um i think it was quite matter of fact but well a lot of times you know you you hide you cover up your sadness by not acting uh devastated hmm. I, I i agree <clears throat> you know especially with men men try to men are good about hiding their true feelings yeah, yeah. He, was he on okay terms with finn and the rest of the guys from you know, from wasted. Oh. I know. I know. Paul Chapman got was gone recently too, which is also oh, sad. Chapman. We had um, him over here last year. He he, out of the blue, said, "I'm coming over. Could I stay?" Um, yes, of course. Um, we never did quite find out why he was coming over. But he, he came over and stayed. And again, it was, you know, talking to the early hours and, you know, do you remember this and do you remember that? And this is Finn really you're talking about, right? This is Paul Chapman. Oh, Paul Chapman, okay. Yeah, no, Finn never, we never got, mm. uh, they never got back together. Mm. Again, it was, uh, it was very, very... So Pete was, uh, was Pete... Now, when, when Paul died, was that before or after Pete's accident? It was before. Okay, so Pete knew about him dying. Yeah, very upset. Oh, very upset. Jenny, I wish I could talk to you longer, but I have to go. I'm so, so I'm really so sorry for, you, for your lo loss. No, I'm so sorry. I understand totally. And, you know, I've gone and slapped my PR face on to do this. <sighs> so, you know... You go and do what you've got to do. I understand completely. I wish and any you... time you want to speak to me, do just get on the phone. Or thank, thank you. Drop I, me I, mail. I really appreciate it. I hope you get through this okay. I will. I'm sure I will. I've got good friends. All right. Well, Jenny, be well. I'll talk to you later. Okay. okay. You take care, Michael. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs> Stranger, but they 
Tell me a good thing lasts forever Who's to say we can talk it over Cause in time I know the world out It's a rock and roll geek train wreck. 